So feeding fish is definitely one of the more fun things that we get to do in the hobby. Now whether I'm feeding my fish daily or every other day, which sometimes I switch around, sometimes I go a bit random, but never more than two days, it's always fun. So I found a really good way to combat sort of excess nutrients is to feed every other day in a tank that's obviously having some sort of algae bloom or something like that. If we're all in balance, every day a little bit is perfect. So it's actually now my favorite time of night. I like to come in at around seven, eight, it's normally past that actually, more like 8.30. All the kids are in bed, the wife's settled down, nothing's going on. That's when I like to do my feeding. I don't know why, I just feel really peaceful at this time. It's fun to do, no rush, just chilled. And it's probably gonna sound like absolute rubbish, but I swear to God, the fish know as well that this is their feeding time. Like if I come in at any other time of the day, they don't really sort of, you know, run all, run, they don't run, swim all the way up to the glass. But this time of the day, always right there, ready, waiting. But for example, the ecosystem tank you can see behind me, I will feed every other day. Now this is because I don't want to be doing water changes and that sort of thing. Well, not don't want to, but it's more of a sort of experimental tank. So by feeding every other day, I'm ensuring that the fish are well fed because they don't actually need food every single day. You give them a big feed every other day. There's less waste being generated by the fish, but there's also less waste from feeding just laying on the surface or the, the base of the, the, tip, the floor, the substrate. Yeah, that's the one. The fish are doing really well though guys, I've got the uh, male and female angler there. I've got two of these yet really nice yellow rice fish, there's one of them and the other one is usually around here somewhere, um, can't see them at the moment anyway. And there's a sparkling grammy which I hadn't seen since I put in until recently when I did a feed in and he popped out so let's put some food in and try and get him to come out again. And there is the sparkling grammy guys, you can see him there, look, oh, <laughs> I knew it. He likes to hide all the time, he's getting more and more comfortable though. Really nice sparkling grammy, that one's definitely a male I think, it's got lots of sparkles, not really coming out at the moment in this light, but you know, sometimes when he goes near the surface in other areas, he glistens really nicely. Let me get some close up. And there's always one fella that waits patiently for his food as well, and that's Timmy. <laughs> I should, probably shouldn't have left his food right next to him because he's just sat there staring at it even though he doesn't eat that. Timmy, 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 look what I got. <laughs> he knows, he knows that Thomas means food. <laughs> Him and Thomas are best buddies, but my friend, it's not defrosted yet, so you're gonna have to wait a few more minutes. Okay, buddy, we're ready. Oh yeah, guys, an update. Remember that one guppy fry that came in? Uh, 
was literally here two seconds ago. Where have you gone, buddy? I frightened him. Anyway, he's in here and he's doing great. Oh, there he is. Found him. There he is. There we go. Look, just trying to get some colour as well. I think it's a boy. Yeah, definitely a boy. We've got a nice male there. That's going to be cool. Oh, Timmy's just taking his his whole thing with him. No one's taking it, buddy. You, you Just chill. Just chill out. It's mine. It is mine. I will take back to the mothership. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you next time. And the good thing is the guppy will then clean up any of the scraps as well. And what I like to do next is take the rest of the bloodworms. I tend to always put some in this tank, like so. Whoa, that's a lot. <laughs> they'll, all eat, they'll eat all of that though in no time. And then obviously there's some more scraps still in there. I need to really need to clean this out, don't I? I'll just put that in there as well. Look, there we go. <laughs> and look who else knows it's feeding time. Come on, guys. So I just using this uh, goldfish, gold Japan stuff, sinking little pieces. Just doosh, 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 doosh. They'll, well, if they give them two seconds, they'll sink, but they're so eager. So they're, that's all good. They sink down. What I do is I chuck them in with a bit of force and they just sink straight away. Currently floor gang. As many of you guys know, I rarely lose any fish. I mean, I can count on one hand the amount of fish I've lost. You guys know it too, because I always tell you as well. So I've lost Captain Redbeard. Again, he was over two years old. So, you know, old age better. It's not old age, but apparently from what I've been told nowadays, for a better, the, the expected life, you know, length is around two to two and a half years because of the breeding and all of that. But we won't go into any of that. And the other one was chocolate, obviously, which was part of the Ranchu crew you can see behind me. Original G's, you guys will remember. Um, yeah, a bit sad. I was watching actually a video of the original planted tank I did for the goldfish the other day. Just watching it back through again, just to see what, what my style is like now versus then. Not, not much has changed, to be honest, but chocolate popped up and I, I, I'm, I, had, a, I had a lump in my throat, I'm not gonna lie. Bit wimpy of me maybe, but you know, it's true. It's how it was, that's how it is, whatever. In the angelfish aquarium behind me, they're bigger fish. They need feeding every day. They use quite a bit of energy, you know. Although I don't see it, they do swim around quite a bit when I'm not in the room. Might be worth setting up a little time lapse actually and just leaving them to it and just seeing the activity that goes on in the tank when I'm not sat in front of it like this with a massive light beaming down on top of them. And again, another tank that I feed every day is also the Rainbow River fish. This is because there's a high flow in this system. So it's a rotational flow, high flow coming in one way and then coming all the way down the, ow, <laughs> just bang my shoulder, all the way down this end. So these fish down here, as you can see, the Rainbow fish and the uh, Danios, they're always flowing, they were swimming very fast against that flowing current, which means they're using a lot of energy. So I make sure I feed them a good pinch of feed every single day. You know, it's like humans at the end of the day, the more energy you use and the more energy you need to replenish. So more feeding. But then of course you can look at the guppy aquarium. Well, I feed this every day as well. Why is that? Because there's young in there. Young fish are growing. So they're growing and swimming. So for that reason, they need more food. So I tend to feed this one actually twice a day, but smaller portions if you like, just a small pinch twice a day. You know what, this is weird actually. I didn't realize the you know the different protocols I have with the different tanks until I'm actually going through with you now. I just sort of do it automatically based on, like I look at it and think, okay, babies, more feeding, fast flow, more feeding, goldfish, big boys, lots of feeding, lots of waste, more water changes, you know? That tank there behind, you see me? I water change more than any others and it's probably about once every week and a half. I do like a 30, 40% water change. All the others, I'll go two or three weeks without any sort of water change at all. Maybe just a water top up. If that, even if it's not even needed most of the time, probably, probably yeah, that didn't make any sense. But you, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Some tanks get a lot more water changes than others. Most of my tanks don't really get a lot of water changes. Again, that's because I control the feeding, I control the waste, and pretty much all of them are packed out with plants. So that does a lot of the cleaning for you, and it takes a lot of the headache out of fish keeping 
from my experience anyway. So a good while ago now, I think it was one of my like earlier ecosystem tanks, it was the first time that I mentioned that I fed my fish like twice, well, every other day. A few people were like saying that that wasn't good or that wasn't, wasn't okay. And I was like, well, the fish are very healthy and you all keep asking how there's no algae in the tank. There's your answer. There's not a load of waste being produced by the fish or by me. So, you know, I think that's one of the keys to some of my success is making sure that like, you don't overfeed the fish at any point. Most tanks, a little pinch once a day. If there's frying it twice a day, small pinch as well. Again, I grind up the, uh, the fish food even smaller if there is fry. Fish don't really need to feed anything like most people think they do. You know, I had a problem before when I was on holiday and I let someone come in to feed the fish and they killed like a few of them. This was a long time ago. I, I thought they knew how to, I just assumed people knew a small pinch. Well, they weren't doing that. There was a few fish in the tank at the time and they were using a big pinch, like a pinch was like, <laughs> like a shovel going in. And yeah, they just, they just polluted the tank and there was too much ammonia in it that built up over five days and I lost a couple of fish. No, it was my own fault. I take full responsibility. I should have made sure that the guy knew what a pinch of food was, but it's literally like, I use like just that tiny little bit at the end ding, and then a little sprinkle. You don't need to be going overboard with it. So can you overfeed your fish? Yes, you can apparently. I mean, it was said that they could explode from eating too much. <laughs> I don't think that's a thing. I'm pretty sure they'd, they'd poop before that. But they can get like liver diseases and things like that from, I guess, from like over digesting the food going through. I don't, I don't really, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to go somewhere with that. I don't know where it's going. But yes, you can overfeed fish. There's no way I could do that because of how, how you've seen I feed them. I think the old sort of rule of feeding the fish as much as they can eat in two minutes is actually a really good thing to go by. I mean, two minutes is a long time to be sprinkling food in. Like, you'd be surprised how long two minutes takes when you actually time it doing something. Like, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of food. I mean, if you've got a couple of fish, you probably need to reduce it down. I don't know. But like, for instance, this tank you can see here, the Rainbow River one, that'll be about two minutes of sprinkling, just like, you know, like I'm salting something. <laughs> I don't know. And of course, not to forget the no filter tank that we've got here. This has got two sparkling gramas in it. I think it's a male and a female. I'm not entirely sure, but no, there you can see one there. Look, they're coming to the front because they know it's feed time. Yeah, here we go. Look, ready and waiting. So let's get them some food. Another little tap. So for them, obviously, it's a real fine grained food. This is really difficult to do one handed. I should have planned this in advance. This, this one here always tends to eat first and then the other one hangs back. But if I just put them in separate areas, there we go, look. look. They're really delicate eaters. And see see the mount floating on the top there? We don't need any more than that. That'll be absolutely fine for this feed. Look at the size of them. You can imagine how big their body is. And look at one grain of food there. Like, it's already a few grains of that. Their stomachs are going to be full. So that's, that's what I'm talking about. Don't overfeed your fish. But this tank's coming along really, really well. We've got a little bit of algae going on in some of the rotala, but it's actually dying off. So that's why I've decided to leave it. The tank is obviously getting nicely balanced. Some of the stuff that was uh, melting away has just since gone up to the surface and will be scooped out shortly. But yeah, everything's doing really good. Look at the AR Mini there. It's looking really vibrant as well. Really liking it. And this was the Rotala uh, HR. And you can see with a low level of light coming down, it's predominantly green. And then on the tips now, it's just starting to get red. So that suggests that as we progress up here, it's going to get more and more red. And that makes sense because there's a little bit of Rotala HR there versus the Rotunda Folia. Look at the difference in color. That's great. We're going to get more and more of that on either side. So you're going to get like a big red explosion either side. That's going to look so good. So that's it. I've fed all the fish in the fish room. I think I have. Yeah, I have. Yeah. There's still one tank left that we haven't actually fed, isn't there? The discus tank. So this is the Discus Aquarium and recently I trimmed it right back because it was an absolute jungle. I had Rotala just coming up all the way from the background, looping over the top with loads of Ballastinaria Nana as well. Like you couldn't, no light was even penetrating into the tank at all. So as such, 
Some of the Java fern suffered a little bit, but it's looking really good now. Anyway, I feed this tank once every day, a big feed as well, because there's lots of fish in here. I'll put some B-roll over the top of me feeding it. Obviously, discus need quite a lot of food, and there's also very fast swimming fish in there with them that will actually tend to get the food before the discus. So I tend to overfeed this tank, but it's also got a nice big canister filter under the bottom way higher than what is needed for this volume of water but that's why it keeps it so clean and looking really good now this is actually one of the most successful tanks i have in terms of like no algae growth and plant growth like any plant i put in here just goes really really well goes nuts grows crazy and actually if i've got a plant from the plant vats out in the studio and i put it in here and it's got algae on the algae goes now that's probably because the siamese algae eater will, will clean it for me but so will the guppies that i've got in here you know, there's a really good mix of fish in here. A lot of people ask me as well, what temperature to keep it at? That's at 28 degrees centigrade. Um, what's that in Fahrenheit? I'll put it up on the screen anyway. But yeah, so that seems to be a really good mix for all the fish I've got. Everything lives really healthily, no problems at all. And the plants grow great, which is awesome. You might be noticing the discus look a bit small. They're actually fully grown. I bought them when they were stunted. Didn't know anything about discus. I just saw them in the shop. And back then I was just like, buy it, take it home. It all worked out all right. I mean, I got a few more, but they're all stunted with genetic defects. So some of them passed away. But the strongest ones, these two we've got here, Sunshine and George, they're doing really well. They're part of the family and we love them. So if you've reached this far in the video and you're not subscribed already, come on, you might as well click the button. I mean, you clearly enjoyed it to watch this long video, right? I've got loads more stuff coming up anyway and big, big plans for the future for the channel. So hopefully you'll stick around and enjoy what's to come.